But here I can disable it, preview what it looks like. And what I can also do is use that layer mask to reload my selection. So make sure it's selected here. And if we go to channels, I can see the layer mask here. And there are a couple of ways to I can do this. Here, the layer mask isn't visible. If I turn it on, it shows up as a red background, very similar to the red overlay mode we had when we were in Select and Mask. And as long as that is selected, I can use this to load a, a selection. Now I can do that here in the Channels option by clicking on this little dotted circle. And that has just automatically loaded the selection. I'm going to deselect that. I can also go to Select, Load Selection. And uh, here, just New Selection. It's based on the mask. You'll notice you can also base it on the transparency of a layer. Here, there's no real transparency. It's, it's a mask, so that's what we want to use. But if you had a layer where you've deleted the background permanently, not just with the layer mask, you could use that. So here, two ways to load the selection. Each one is, is equally good. And again, we're, working, we're on the layer mask, um, but I have that selection outline. And if I want to use this as the basis to make a path, um, I have to switch over to the Pass option here. And here I, I have a number of um, paths I've already created. I'm just going to go through the process again. So here, um, I can just click on, on this button here. And that creates a work path. I could also go um, under here and go make work path. They do exactly the same thing. The only difference is when I use the drop down menu item, it allows me to set the tolerance. So the tolerance is how close it's going to be to the original selection. If I enter in a, a high number like 10, you can see I get a very loose um, path. Let's just go in and turn off visibility on that layer so you can see. So I get a very loosely drawn path that doesn't look that representative of the original shape. Let me just undo that. But I can also choose to make it uh, closer. So make work path. Uh, the lowest value I can go to is 0.5. Click OK and I have something that is a lot tighter in terms of the outline than what I had before. So here it's a work path. Uh, just click on Save Path. And since I already have a Trudeau outline, I'm going to go in and just call it um, New Trudeau. I don't really need that one, but uh, that's there. And now I just have to click on that path here in order to bring it back up. I can go over and use this. This is the Pass Selection tool and the Direct Selection tool. Very similar to what you have in Illustrator. Click directly on the path and I can see all the anchor points. I'm going to simplify this in Illustrator, but for now we just want a path that's as close as possible to the selection. I just want to show, show you that you can also go in here. Um, right now it's a, it's a path. I could convert it back into a selection very easily. Or I could also um, add an outline. And this is uh, this button here. I don't know what, oh, here it is. Uh, so black and black. And I could also use this to add a fill. So here I would go in and do stroke subpath, uh, pick the tool. I'm going to pick brush, though I will point out that whatever brush is selected will be the one that's that to you. So I should actually check the brush first. And here I can see it's giving me an outline all the way around my path. I'm going to undo that. Um, I could also do fill subpath. And here it's going to be the foreground color. Ah, but I'm on the layer mask, so it's not actually going to show up. So again, maybe I'll just put make a new layer, go to paths. 
and this time I will do fill and stroke and you can see that's much more clearly you've gotten that the outline there so that's one way to kind of go in and just create something that's that's an outline and at this point if this is all you want you don't even really have to go into Illustrator here I would maybe make a couple of changes um, for example the uh, the outline is maybe a little too um, soft with the brush stroke we want it a little bit crisper so I get rid of that but what I really want to do is take advantage of some of the path editing tools in Illustrator which are more sophisticated than they are in Photoshop so I'm gonna go back I have this image that I can use and I have my paths that I created earlier and I'm just gonna point out that I also have a shirt path and a tie path so I can kind of set those ones up as well I'm gonna get rid of the second one I made because I'm quite happy with the first one so I've gotten rid of that uh, I'm gonna save my file and you should save frequently and what I want to do is export paths to Illustrator so all paths or I can select individual paths and this is where it becomes important to, to name your paths so that you know what you're selecting so if this had been path one path two path three that would be really kind of hard to figure out um, but here they're named Trudeau shirt and tie very you know very easy to figure out what's what so here I'm just going to select pass all pass click on OK it's going to give me a option I can change the name so I'm going to try this as Trudeau Paths AI. Um, I'm going to go to where I want to save this. So here, I actually like to keep it in the same folder as the other one, the uh, original image. So I'm going to go to Illustrator, Photoshop, click on Save, and now I can actually go to Illustrator and make some. You know make some adjustments to those those paths 